All right, my friends. Check my technical equipment here. Make sure if I got everything running right. Check my iPad. All right, so it appears that we are live. Coming to you live from an undisclosed location. Southeast Asia, my friends. See if I got anybody awake. I know it's like 4.30 in the morning over there in the States where a lot of my viewers are located. All right, so got a couple people on board here. Who I got? I got Countdown Traveler. All right, our Cat Zero. No, man, this is live. This is straight up live. Live entertainment. Let's see, how's the audio? I'm not using any special microphones. I said, you know what? It's just such a damn beautiful day. <laughs> I just throw a title down, boom. Hit the go live button, let's see what comes out. All right, so we got some folks checking in. JB, how you doing? Checking in from Baguio. Got Orbly, Carlos, Derek, Mike Harrelson checking in from South Alabama. Uh, Carly, how you doing? Carlos. And Mark says I need a haircut. Yeah, you know what, man? I do need a haircut. I got to run up here to my barber shop. And he charges me uh, 50 pesos, which is one U.S. dollar. So maybe I'll do a video from up there. He does a great job. But the title of this live stream, folks, is Who Stopped the Rain? Because whoever, <laughs> whoever it was, I want to... I'm just uh, celebrating this day that we got a few hours of sunshine. I mean, it rained this morning, but it stopped raining, I don't know, probably 10 o'clock or so. The kids were able to get out, get a little sunshine. I figured it would start raining an hour later, and it, it sprinkled a little bit. But this afternoon has been quite beautiful. I've still, I still got some sunshine, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna sit outside, chew on a cigar, I'm gonna talk to this camera, and just, uh, I just celebrate that it's not raining. Damn, it's been raining here in uh, Subic Bay for about two months now, non-stop. When I asked a dude yesterday, I said, man, what, what day is it gonna stop raining? The guy said, ah, maybe November. <laughs> and I've talked about it on several videos, but you know, I've, I've been all over Southeast Asia. And this is the first, uh, this, is, this is like the, just constant nonstop rain right here in Subic Bay. I talked to my buddies down in Cebu, they're like, no man, the sun's shining here. It's just coming a monsoon here. So anyhow, I want to thank everybody for uh, for joining me here. This little quick live stream. Just me enjoying some outdoor time. Let me check in and see who's here. Got Jesus, Vinny, Kuya. Yeah, Sterling. Yeah, I, I will. I'll do a haircut video. I've done a couple before, and like I said, my, my man here charged me uh, one one dollar, one U.S. dollar for a haircut. That's the that's the going rate right here. It's cheaper out in the province, cheaper down uh, near Fatimas Village, but here I, I got charged a dollar. Let's see who else is here. I don't see it. Doesn't, don't tell me how many people are here. Just got a zero up there, but obviously there's more people here than zero. Eastern North Carolina. 
checking in. All right, folks. So I just tell, like yesterday, yesterday the rain let up for like, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. I just I decided to make a run. And if you've seen my video about the Magic Lagoon, uh, you know, right over there on base, a little fishing spot, restaurant, bar. I took the late, uh, well, I took Fatima and Force G there. They loved it. So yesterday I made a run, you know, tried to get over there. Cause even if it's raining and you're at the Magic Lagoon, you know, you can just chill in the restaurant area. Now folks, we got going in the tricycle and like as soon as we got to the gate, boom, here come the monsoon. And so by the time we got to the gate and got in the taxi, I was already soaked. Everybody was wet, the damn stroller was wet. So we ended up going to Harbor Point, walking around for a little bit. And of course it was still raining. So we tried to get a taxi back to Barrio Barreto. I mean, the minute we leave, left the gate, cut a left, boom, it's gridlock traffic. And usually Friday, Saturday nights, you know, northbound traffic coming from along a pole, trying to head up, you know, north into Zambales. It's, it's bumper to bumper. But yesterday, what made it worse, when gridlocked it, there's this new place over here called Divi Mart. It's like two, three floors of uh, cheap goods. And he had this huge grand opening yesterday. He had this stage out there, beautiful girls singing, dancing. I think they gave away some free hot dogs. And the ladies wanted to go. I would have took them, but with, with the kids, it's just too loud. I mean, it's like taking, you know, you can't take young babies to a damn rock concert. It was just too loud, so I said, look, there's gonna be too many people, free food, it's too loud, we're not going over there. So anyhow, we leave Harbor Point, and we leave out the gate, cut a left. It was gridlock. It was worse than Manila because Divi Mart was screwing up the traffic. It took forever to get back to Barrio Barreto. So I said, "All right, we'll just we'll go to Sitting Bull, resurrect this night." So we went to Sitting Bull Restaurant. Great food. And folks, if you're if you're anywhere near Barrio Barreto, go check out Sitting Bull. It's across from Cheap Charlie's down uh, Del Pilar Street right there, right behind that Rico's. And uh, those little bars right there at the corner. Go to Sitting Bull. Great, great food. Ladies are wonderful, friendly. And so that's how we resurrected our night. And now today, some, you know, the rain gets cut off and I'm like, I started to make a run and go take everybody fishing around noon. And I said, no, nah, same shit gonna happen to me. But it hasn't, it's been a beautiful afternoon. At least the kids could get outside. They played over in the hot tub a little bit. And, and now they're, they're taking a nap. And wife number one. Yeah, she's still back there scrubbing on my shoes. And folks, you walk around in tennis shoes for two months in a monsoon, walking in all this, you know, these puddles and everything. My shoes smell like the inside of a sewer. And so luckily, I got such a wonderful wife, number one. She's been over there, hands scrubbing down the marrows, and I know they're gonna smell like uh, whatever that scent is on that tide she's got over there. Oh yeah. As long as the sun comes out tomorrow, where they can dry out. But it's probably gonna go back to a monsoon tomorrow, and then my freshly washed shoes will probably sour because there ain't no sunshine to dry them. All right, let me check back. All right, got JB in the house. Smoke Innovations. Man, uh, he's asking about that rotten chicken that Fatima had me cook. I didn't eat that chicken. And I told them, don't, don't feed the babies that chicken. But Fatima and Marissa, they, they ate that chicken. They said it was most delicious. Now, apparently, so maybe it wasn't rotten. It smelled rotten to me. But it, maybe it wasn't rotten, but what made it especially delicious was me smoking that thing on that little portable grill. 
And of course I cooked the hell out of it. So anything rotten in there, it was gone. And that smoke just put that flavor in there and they weren't used to that. So they definitely loved that chicken, but I, I didn't try it. I'm just now getting over a two month run. Well, about a month with that little illness that we suffered. So I wasn't about to get no more, not, not by eating a damn, you know, $3 chicken, hell no. But they took the risk, they ran the gauntlet, they're okay. All right, here we got Ace Toxic up in the house. Cool story. Yeah, wife number one, she is lucky to be with me. She knows it too. She, she knows she's lucky, my friends. She's very lucky to be here. Uh, Vinny, I ever been to those clubs? I've been to a few. <laughs> I've been to a few, my friends. Uh, do I miss the states? Folks, that's a question uh, you get asked a lot by people who are here that are either thinking about retiring, thinking about moving. There are some things that I miss about the states. But it's probably not what you think I'm going to say. Obviously, I miss my family that I don't get to see. Okay, that's pretty much a given. Um, anybody that leaves their family, you're going to have you're going to have that. Uh, yes, of course, you're going to miss your family. But the things I miss about the states are small, really, because when you leave when you leave the states. You can pretty much get most of all the food that you're used to eating. Now, maybe at a little premium price. You can get most of the booze, the liquor, the beer. You can uh, get cigars. I mean, you can go shopping. You can get pretty much in a lot of places, not every country, but in a lot of countries, you can, you can get pretty much everything you want. And if you can't, you order it. Maybe you pay a little import tax. But I'll tell you a couple things that I miss. Number one, Bud Light. I miss Bud Light because I'm a redneck and that's what I drink. No, I drink anything, but Bud Light was my favorite beer as far as, you know, uh, typically what I drink. I can get Budweiser here in the Philippines. I can get Budweiser uh, in Thailand. I, I can get it pretty much the majority of the countries I've traveled to, but for whatever reason, folks, I have not laid eyes on a Bud Light since I left that side of the world. Now, if you know where I can buy a Bud Light in the Philippines, please put it in the comments down below because I'm gonna get on a, on a plane, train, or automobile, and I'm gonna go buy every Bud Light I can get my hands on. If they got 10 cases, I will buy all 10 cases. But I just, that's something I can't get, I can't find. So uh, I miss Bud Light. Number two, I miss Chinese takeout. Now yes, we're over here right next to China. Yes, you know, uh, you, you get wonderful food in Southeast Asia, right? The food scene, especially in Thailand is awesome. But if you go to a Chinese restaurant in Thailand, you're gonna get authentic Chinese food because they are catering to Chinese tourists. And so you can't walk into a restaurant in Thailand, a Chinese place and say, yeah, give me a General Cho's chicken, you know, two extra egg rolls, some crab rangoon, and some hot and sour soup. They just look, oh shit, damn, almost dropped the iPad. They'll just look at you like you're crazy. It's not gonna work. And so that was another thing that, you know, once a week I'm eating Chinese takeout. Delicious, tearing up a General Cho's chicken or a Mugu Guy pan or uh, sesame chicken. You know what I'm talking about. I found a place that was pretty good in Abu Dhabi. So occasionally in my travels, I've been able to get, you know, pretty close. But right off the top of my head, what do I miss? Bud Light and Chinese takeout. Now Mexican, I can get good Mexican. Folks, you go to Tequila Reef over in Angeles City, great Mexican food. 
Okay, several places uh, uh, over in Thailand, Patia, Mike's Mexican Restaurant, on time. And you got Americans behind it. So those, when you walk in those Mexican restaurants, it's just like you walked into a restaurant back in the States. And all, oh yeah, because you asked the question, what do I miss about the States? So those are the two biggest things, man. Bud Light, Bud Light, and I miss uh, Chinese takeout. All right, let me go back to the comments. Shit, that's a whole nother video right there. I talk about that a lot too. Let's see. Coronas? Yeah, man, you can get Coronas. Coronas, no problem. And you know, Sam Mig Light is similar to a Corona. Um, so even if you're out in the province, you get a Sam Mig Light. It's similar, it's familiar to a Corona. But if you want to know shit real Corona, yeah, you can get Corona. No problem getting that. Um, I mean, down here in my liquor store, I can get, I think uh, they got Stella Artois. I can go to Angel's Bakery and get all these German beers. Absolutely delicious. I am thankful for that. Um, but, you know, for years... As a redneck, I open up my ref, I got a damn 12 pack of Bud Light in there. And, you know, that's just, that's just what I was used to. That's the flavor I'm looking for, and I can't find it over here. Yeah, I drink Bud Ice too. I haven't been able to find Bud Ice. Only regular Budweiser. And it, to be straight with you, most of the regular Budweiser, it, it don't taste right. It's not the same. Uh, I'm not sure where it's brewed, where it's coming out of, but uh, I don't I don't grab a Budweiser and drink it and like, oh, that reminds me of home. Nah. And I say home, I ain't got no damn home. I'm home right now. <laughs> My mom always asks me that. Shout out to mom if you're watching. Shout out, when are you coming home? Like, what, what are you talking about? You got to be more specific. You know, right now, this is my home, sitting in this damn bamboo chair right here. East LA burrito at Tequila Reef. Oh, hell yeah. Oh yeah, that's some good food right there. Roy, how you doing, my friend? Who are the best drinkers in the world? Man, I don't, I don't know, I drink with a lot of people. I drink with a lot of people and I don't know because usually <laughs> usually uh when I'm when I'm drinking like that she don't remember too much but you know uh, my friends from Australia there's some hard drinkers man um, I got a buddy down in some booth from Scotland that dude's a real hard drinker but he gets crazy when he drinks I mean I yeah uh, well I guess that's uh, not very detail coming from me because I do get crazy myself. But this dude, um, he turns into Conor McGregor when he starts drinking. All right, so who we got here? They sold Marlboros, but they were terrible. Let's see. Yeah, cool story. We, we all get crazy when we get drunk. I mean, that's what alcohol does to us. Hey, somebody, if you can see on there, tell me how many people I got. Because for some reason on this iPad, it's saying I got zero. I'm just wondering how many people are joining us here on this live stream. Oh, 84. All right, cool. Well, welcome, everybody. This ain't going to be a long one. I just wanted to go live and just... Uh, sharing my beautiful day sitting out here without it raining and and, and you know I've, I've got some more videos i want to do just talking videos but the problem is with with all this rain hitting the roof and hitting hitting this little uh, carport area it is literally so loud inside well, you, there's no way you can do it outside, obviously. It's way too loud. But even inside the house, it is so loud. I can't do a video where all you're going to hear is the rain. The, the audio is just bad. I tried every room in the house. This front room seems to be okay. 
but raining uh, I guess probably any filmmakers can tell you rain will screw up your day trying to make videos that's for damn sure it is uh is it Saturday or Sunday here? It, it's Sunday here. It's Sunday here now. It's uh, Sunday afternoon. And it's kind of funny you ask that because uh, Marissa, she goes to church every Sunday. So we got up this morning and for some reason she thought it was Friday. Like, hey, what are you doing? You better get ready for church. You're going to be late. So we, nobody, nobody knew what day it was. That's another effect of this monsoon rain. You get shuffled indoors and you know you make a quick run out get soaking wet you come back you know just to hit the market days just seem to run together okay all right so that's some nice nice comments coming across here Thank you. Let's see. All right, from Greg. How long are you going to live in Subic, and where do you think you'll reside next? Man, that's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, you know, we like it here. We've had a good run here. But, you know, I got some, I got some plans in the back of my head. I like to move around. I like to move around. I like to see new places. I, I like to do new things. So we, we're enjoying our, our time here, but I, I'll tell you right now, by, by next year, we'll have something new going on. And I don't know if, uh, I mean, we've been living, ever since we left the beach condo, left down there, we've been, we've been living pretty good, different places. Um, but we really miss the $28 beach condo. We miss living that lifestyle. Um, I'm not saying we're gonna go back to that exact $28 beach condo. I haven't decided that yet. I haven't decided if we're if we're rolling uh, to Cebu, gonna punch to a new country for a while. But we miss we miss that province life. We miss the province life and. You know, I don't know. I, I'll give you a little tidbit. I'm, I'm thinking about taking it up a notch or taking it down a notch. And when I say that, I'm sitting here thinking that maybe $28 a month is too much. Maybe that's just too much, you know, having, uh, having all those amenities that we had at that beach condo. Electricity, running water. We had a nice restroom facility. And folks, if you if you haven't watched that video, yeah, just type in twenty eight dollar beach condo, Philippines. It, it'll come up. Trust me. But I'm I'm thinking maybe maybe we're gonna get a little bit more rudimentary. And I'm not sure if we're gonna go to the village. I'm not, I'm not real sure, but I'll just say this. I've been uh, looking at tents. <laughs> I've, been, I've been doing some research on some tents. Um, I think the keywords I typed in were stormproof tents. That's kind of the research I'm doing right now. But I can't, I can't tell you exactly, exactly where we're gonna be come January. All right, I'll take a couple more comments and then I'm gonna punch out. We got uh, got some plans tonight, and I always say that this video is gonna be quick, and I'm at 25 minutes, so I'm gonna hold it below 30. I'll take one more comment and then we'll shut her down. Chris T says uh, build a hut on the beach, and uh, Gold Incorporated says build a little place in the jungle with just uh, wood for fire. Well, see, if we go back to her village, you know, her village is right in the middle of a jungle slash uh, sugarcane field. And there, nobody cooks with electricity. Everybody still cooks with wood. And, you know, we like that lifestyle. 
do have electricity. There's no running water, you gotta go down to the well, but we, we, we do have electricity there. But it's a balance of trying to, to do and live that type of life and still be on YouTube. If I wasn't on YouTube, I didn't need to be on the internet, you know, uh, like I do. Hell yeah, we just, we pick an island somewhere and, and we'd be living Gilligan's Island style. But you can't live that style when you're trying to upload videos and, and stay up on YouTube. So there's gotta be a balance. So we wanna to try to go back to that lifestyle, but I've gotta figure out a better internet situation than we were in when we were down there. And maybe they've upgraded, upgraded some lines or some closer lines where um, I'm in striking distance to be able to take my, pro my, my video, take it to uh, you know comm shop somewhere, internet shop, get it uploaded, but still be within striking distance from the village. So we'll see. Like I said, we've been living, we've been living good, but you know, we like that. We love living in that $28 beach condo. And what, what you end up doing is when you, I, I guess it's kind of a trade off. If you have a really nice place and we've got a really nice place here, you end up spending more time at your place. That's just natural. When you're living in a $28 beach condo, you end up spending all your time out on the go, hitting these events, going and hanging out with people, right? And so it's a different lifestyle. It's kind of give and take. Uh, several factors. There ain't much to do in the room. And you got more money in your pocket because you're not paying, you know, you're not paying a huge uh, rent bill. 28 bucks. But may, may try to take it down. Go from 28 down to... You know, just get it down as low as we could go and still survive and still have uh, the capability to stay here on YouTube and entertain folks. Okay, so folks, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this. I want to just say thanks for everybody who joined me during this little quick live stream. And stay tuned for more videos coming your way. I do want to say thanks for all my subscribers. We're over 15,000 subscribers now. Uh, what are we at? 15, 15 and some change. You know, when I started doing this, I, you know, when, when you get 100 subscribers, you're like, wow. And then you hit 1,000, you know, it's like, wow. So all these little, not little, but all these milestones, you know, hit 15,000, boom, somebody came off the top ropes. I see it on the iPhone, but I don't see it. Here we go right here. Joseph Segelke, man. How you doing? Thank you very much. Boom. With a maroon. That's more like a mauve bar headed north, stacking it to the top of this. Thank you very much, Joseph, man. I hope you're doing well, uh, wherever you're at in our beautiful world, my friend. Hello, Marissa. How was church? All right, so Marissa's sneaking in here. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah, folks, so 15,000 subscribers. Thanks, everybody, for subscribing to, to our channel, to our adventures. Boom, another two-tone gold bar coming off the top ropes. My Filipinas travels. Hope to see you in January, but understand if you leave Subic. Thank you very much, my friend. Um, Hopefully I'll be around. If not, I'll, I'll, I'll probably probably be in the Philippines. So hopefully we can uh, our paths will cross, and we'll be able to hook up and drink a few and talk about the mysteries of life. All right, folks, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Thanks again for all my subscribers. If, if you're not a subscriber, bottom right hand corner of your screen, hit that Overstay Road sign, and get on board our. Uh, our adventures here and we'd sure love to have you and folks have a wonderful wonderful day evening uh wherever you're at in this beautiful world that we call planet earth and i will see everybody on the next one my friends peace out